wanted to show you something that I found on eBay a couple weeks ago. It's a Boy Scouts of America official fire making equipment kit. Inside is a bow drill set. I'll show that to you in just a minute. I paid about $24 for this after tax and shipping, which is maybe kind of expensive for a bow drill set, but I thought it was a piece of historical memorabilia that I wanted to add to my collection. The seller said that this was originally purchased sometime in the late 1950s, maybe in the 1960s. It didn't specify exactly what the cost was, but when I received it, it smelled pretty musty, like it had been stored in a, a damp basement for, for decades. It doesn't smell too bad now, but it, uh, it's, the smell has dissipated a little bit over the past couple of weeks. But uh, I don't think this has seen a whole lot of use during its lifetime. Let's take a look inside. Here's the kit. It's actually in really good shape. This is the fire bow. This appears to be cut from oak. Looks like it was cut on a table saw or a band saw or something. It's got a leather bow thong. I haven't actually given this kit a try in part for fear of breaking this, uh, this rawhide thong here. I don't know how badly it's dried out over the past several decades of lack of use. Here is what firecrafters will call the thunderhead. Some people will call this a handhold or socket or um, something to that effect. But in the instructions of this kit, this is called a thunderbird. I've never heard this called a thunderbird before. This is uh, the spindle. It doesn't appear to have gotten a whole lot of use. It's got some light charring on the bottom. It looks more dark brown than black to me. It's hard to say whether or not an ember was actually formed. It's about a foot long and maybe an inch wide. And it looks like it's been rough cut into a hexagonal shape just for, for grip. This is made of yucca. The Boy Scout uh, bow drill kits were made from yucca during this time. Here is the, the fireboard. This is also made of yucca. There's a divot on this side and there's a corresponding divot on the back side. I don't know why this is here. It doesn't look like it's been uh, used. There's no evidence of charring at all. And I also don't see any evidence of uh, black dust in the notch here. It's not real clear to me that an ember was ever formed. Looks like it's in pretty good shape though. And this is a little pouch of tinder. This is the original tinder that came with the kit. It smells a bit musty still. I don't know what it is. It could be jute. It might be, might be flax. It's hard to tell. And the instructions don't say, actually. And here is a couple of pages of instructions. I guess one page front and back. Looking at the instructions, they, they seem pretty credible. I think that there's nothing incorrect here in these instructions, but I think it would be hard for somebody to learn how to do bow drilling based only on these written instructions alone. Bow, bow drilling is something that really needs a little bit of hands-on coaching. Um, they did The instructions also, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, they call this the fire pit. I always call that a divot, but the instructions call this a fire pit. The instructions were taken from um, a book written by a fellow named Charles F. Smith in his book called Games and Recreational Methods. I'm going to put a scanned copy, I'm going to put a link to a scanned copy of these instructions down in the video description, and I'm also going to put a, a, a link to a scanned copy of a few pages from the book, uh, from Charles Smith's book, Games and Recreations. I'll put that down in the description as well. In chapter three of this book, Games and Recreational Methods, was written by a, a fellow named Dudley W. Smith. 
Dudley Smith was known as the champion fire by friction expert of the world. He wrote chapter three of that book. I'm going to read you a paragraph that's part of the instructions here because it's kind of entertaining. Dudley writes in chapter three of uh, Games and Recreational Methods, he says, Next, I worked a small handful of absolutely dry red cedar bark tinder into a thick round pad and placed it under the fire pit of my fireboard. When the starter said go, I drew my bow back and forth with long, complete strokes. In three seconds, three seconds, a pile of smoking black charcoal issued forth from the pit. I then stopped bowing, picked up both the board and the tinder, and blew directly into the smoking pile, which immediately turned into a red ember. In 7.2 seconds after I drew my first bow stroke, the tinder burst into flames. Even though the instructions seem reasonable, Dudley's claims for fire making speed to me seem a bit implausible. Uh, maybe, maybe clocks ran a little bit slower 100 years ago. I should have mentioned that this book, uh, Games and Recreational Methods, was written in 1924. I'd like to see somebody make fire in 7.2 seconds. Well, these bow drill kits were sold by the Boy Scouts of America for a long, long time. I don't know when they quit selling them, but they sold them as early as the 1920s. And I happened to find a copy, an online copy, of the Scouting Equipment Catalog dated May of 1925. I'm going to put a copy of, I'm going to put a scan, I'm going to put a link to a scanned copy of a few pages of this catalog down in the description. On page 28 of this catalog is a story written by Dudley Smith about some of his fire making adventures. Again, some of his uh, advice on making fire by friction are pretty credible. Uh, they seem reasonable. It's just that the claims for speed to me seem a bit implausible, if not fabricated outright. It's hard to say. But on page 29 of this catalog, they have bow drill sets for sale. Uh, you could buy a regular, ordinary Elm bow drill set for $1 in 1925. $1 in 1925 is $15.81 in 2021. And for an extra 20 cents, you could buy an extra package of tinder. Well, 20 cents in 1925 is equivalent to $3.16 in uh, 2021. And then just under the regular bow drill set, you could buy a yucca bow drill set, an upgraded yucca bow drill set, as recommended by Dudley. Uh, Dudley W. Smith for a dollar and ten cents. A dollar and ten cents is seventeen dollars and thirty nine cents in twenty twenty one dollars. I know I paid twenty four dollars for this. That all seems really expensive to me uh, for a bow drill set, considering I can go out into the woods and pick up things I need for free. Well, I'm going to stop now and I'm going to tune this kit up as best I can before I try to make a fire with it. I wanted to show it to you before I risked damaging it, in particular that uh, leather bow thong. Uh, so I'm gonna stop, do some experimenting, tune the kit up, see if I can get it to work. And if I can, you'll be seeing this video and you'll get to see the first ember made with this kit probably in 50 plus years. Stay tuned. Let's give this a 
official vintage Boy Scouts of America bow drill kit a try. No joy. Your fireboard is on fire. I know. Look at there. Fireboard itself is on fire. You see that? And worse than that. My bow thong started shredding on me. It's about to break. I might have to go put some paracord on this and see if I can get it to go. Rats. Back in a minute. Well, let's try this again. The uh, original bow cord broke and I replaced it with some uh, paracord. And I'm gonna use what I call my Egyptian, modified Egyptian bow drill technique three wraps but no clove hitch and uh, just so you know I'm on my third hole the second hole that I burned in just a few minutes ago I didn't show that on camera the fireboard caught on fire as I was burning it in so let's see if the third time's a charm This kit's proving to be challenging to use. Fireboard's on fire again. 
trying to trying to get the ember out of the fireboard so it doesn't keep burning. I think the board's out. My bird's nest is a uh, pile of fluffed up jute twine, some cedar shavings, and a little piece of the original tinder bundle, just for good measure. I didn't want to burn all that up. go <clears throat> altogether that was a pretty difficult job I have to tell you I don't think uh, Dudley W. Smith got an ember in 6.2 seconds so uh, to make this work, I had to do a couple things. First of all, I had to shorten the leather thong a little bit. Uh, I moved the knot in about an inch and a half from where it was uh, where I first got it. And I was afraid to tighten it up too much because I didn't want to break the string, which I ended up doing anyhow. But until I tightened it up, it was slipping all the time. And I don't know if you could tell in the first part of this video I kept moving my hand up the bow to try and tighten it up and it just didn't work. It ultimately caused the bow, uh, bow thong to fail. That was the first thing I did, tighten that up. The second thing I had to do was stop using the original Thunderhead or Thunderbird as they called in the instructions. You can see that I started when I was getting friction down at the fireboard or the fire pit I was also getting a lot of friction and smoke at the uh, at the Thunderbird. I don't know what this material is, but it seems to be pretty soft. So I had to get rid of that. And that, after I tightened up my leather thong, the additional friction that I was getting from this Thunderhead was causing the bowstring to slip even more. Got rid of that and started using my uh, handy stone Thunderhead. And that reduced my overall friction quite a bit. And on the first try, I got an ember working down in the basement and practicing, but I also noticed that the fireboard caught fire on that first ember as well. Well, we came outside to practice and you saw what happened. The fireboard <laughs> caught fire, my uh, bowstring broke, and I had to go tune it up and uh, put some paracord in to make it work. One of the issues is that the, uh, the bow itself is kind of flexible. So as you start tightening up the bow cord, um, you know, it just doesn't get too, just doesn't get very tight because the, the bow flexes in response to that. So to make it work, I had to use my multi-wrapped, um, what I call modified Egyptian bow drill technique. So this, this, and this ember, excuse me, fire pit divot are where I have been attempting to make embers. I've gotten three embers so far. Um, this fire pit or divot is the one that was originally in the kit when I got it off of eBay. And you can see that it's kind of brown compared to the black charred ones that I created. And you can see that the base of the spindle now is deeply back blackly charred, whereas when I got it, it was kind of brown. So even though the instructions that came with this kit are reasonable, I still believe a little hands-on coaching is required to learn how to drive a bow drill kit. Uh, the divot, the bottom of the spindle, 
they were just lightly browned. The aggravations of using uh, this Thunderbird that came with the kit and the inability to get that bow thong tight, tight enough to cause the spindle to, to rotate tightly. My guess is that the little boy who probably got this for a Christmas or a birthday present years ago probably didn't get it to work. And my guess is the three embers I've made with it so far are the first ones in the 50 or 60 years that this bow drill kit has been in existence. Anyway, it's a fun little experiment in the history of uh, Boy Scout fire making. I had fun despite the difficulties. I hope you had fun watching it. See you again soon.